everyone, this is Nikki with Design Like a Pro and I'm super excited to bring you a tutorial on creating magazine covers. Now we're going to focus on creating covers in Photoshop and with a person on the cover. There's a lot of different flavors of magazine covers out there, but from polling a few of you, a lot of you are interested in people on the cover. So I'm going to show you how to take a photograph and arrange text around it so you don't cover up any crucial element of your photo and that you create something that draws people in. So we're just going to touch on a few of the key elements here. There's so much to do when it comes to magazine covers, but I'm just going to give you a starting point and hopefully that will inspire you to go on and create your own creations because really the magazine's all about what you envision it to be and how you get people to be drawn to it. So let's get started. We already have our photo here. It's, a, it's really important to grab all of your elements and keep them together so that you can get started right away. So here we have a photo. The first thing we see there's a lot of room up here, a lot of room through here and here. So we've got space to put text. That's really important. There's some photos that just aren't going to work on a magazine cover unless you just have the title of the magazine. But if you're going to have a magazine with a lot of text, the photo is key in helping you create that. So we have this image already, but let's go ahead and create a new document here. Now I'm going to base this off of an eight and a half by 11 image. It'll be a little, a little different size, but it'll be really close. One thing when you're in Photoshop is you need to consider those bleeds. In design, you can program them automatically, but that's not so in Photoshop. So when we consider our width, we need to go ahead and add the dimensions for those bleeds while we do this. And that's a quarter of an inch for the width and a quarter of an inch for the height. So we have 11.125. Gotta make sure that this is at least 300 and we'll get going. All right. The first thing I like to do is drag out my guides. It's really important for me to know where I can keep my elements and where I need to stay away from. Now you can do that with your ruler, drag out here and place a guide or you can place them directly by going to view and new guide. So we have a quarter of an inch vertical here. Then we have another vertical guide on the other side. And this is showing me where my quarter of an inch bleeds actually reside. And then I know to stay away from them. So then we have another quarter of an inch on the horizontal, horizontal guide. And then another one at the bottom. Okay, and I like to go a step farther and add a half an inch guide on all sides. This is going to tell me where my safe zone is. The first one showed me where the bleed is. That's the line that's going to get trimmed away. But we need another guide that tells us that this is where our content should go. And this just really helps you keep everything in, in line and in the safe zone so that it doesn't get trimmed away. You definitely don't want to go to all this work and get your magazine cover back and realize that somebody's eye is missing because you took it too close to the edge. Just for example. Okay, so here's all of our guides. Now we're ready to roll. Now we're going to bring that image in. One nice thing in Photoshop is you can flip back and forth between all of your open documents with just control tab. And that'll show you everything that you have open. Control A will select that image. Control C will copy it. And then Control T back to your document and Control V to paste. Okay, so the first thing you need to realize here is take a look at what you see. Start to imagine where those elements are going to go. I'm going to move her up a little bit and up and kind of over. One thing is I don't want her dead center if I can avoid it. It's really important that that doesn't happen. Um, you want to make sure that you create visual interest and interest in putting people dead center really makes it boring. A lot of magazines do that, but they sort of make it a little asymmetrical by having the model pose in different ways. And I don't want her dead center. I'm also going to make her just a hair bigger so she fills our frame a little bit more here. Okay. 
Now I'm going to leave it at that because I want to bring other elements in and that'll help dictate where she's finally going to be on this cover. So the next important step is a logo. If you have a logo for your magazine or maybe you just want to type out the text, that's fine too. I already have a logo made up here. So I'm just going to drop that in and control T brings up the option to resize. Now when you resize something, holding down shift will make sure my proportions stay so that when I resize this, it resizes it proportionately. Okay, so now we're going to actually center this. This is the one thing that you like to have centered is the title. And then make sure it goes up to this line, but make sure it doesn't go beyond that because if you do, then it's going to get trimmed away. Okay, the first thing I notice is I can barely see it because it's white. So we need to change that color. Go ahead and double click on that layer. Go to color overlay. This is a really fun way to play with colors that can easily be removed if you don't like it later. All right, we start off by default that bright red. Actually, the bright red's kind of nice. If you want a bright color to pop off of a fairly neutral photograph, that's one option. You can use a lot of colors in here actually just by playing around and seeing what works and what doesn't. That gold is actually really nice. Um, so you can bring in some bright colors. That's one option. Another option is to pull colors directly from your image to make it match a little bit closer. So maybe I want to pull a neutral brown color from her skin. That's nice. Or maybe let's let's go ahead and go with a gray here in the shadow. That's really nice. You know, I'm not too big. Maybe this, this issue isn't about bright, colorful things. Maybe I want it to be neutral. So if we stick with this gray, that's okay. All right, what else is going on here? Well, first of all, it's right in front of her head. Okay, one thing you don't want to do is cover up important elements of your model. The person is what's engaging. Everything else supplements that, not the other way around. So we need to remove some elements of this logo. And here's a fun little trick. It's probably going to be the most fun and valuable information of this tutorial. And that's to make that logo go behind the model's head. You see that a lot of times on some very popular magazines out there where the logo goes behind the model's head. In order to do that, you can see that this comes way down in her head. So it's going to actually cut off a lot of our logo if we do that. So I'm going to reposition her even more bring her down a little bit so we don't lose so much of the logo because you still want to be able to see her and the logo. Okay, so now we see we can see the word studios here and we have a little bit to cut off, but it's not going to cut so much of our logo away that we're not going to be able to recognize it. All right, so this is what we do. We want to zoom in here. So grab a magnifying glass and zoom in. So we got a good view of what we're about to do. Now I'm going to delete this in a way that's not going to be detrimental. We can go back if we change our mind later. And magazine cover design is all about experimenting with what looks good and what you want to achieve. So with our layer selected, go down here to layer mask and click here. This is going to allow us to remove elements of our layer. Actually, I did that on the wrong layer. Let's go back. We want to do this on our text layer, not the photo. Okay, on our text layer here with our logo, you want to add that layer mask. And what that's going to do is that's going to allow us to delete elements of our layer without actually deleting it. It's just creating a mask. And you use black and white, and then you use a hard brush to do this. Okay? Black takes away white adds. So if you make a mistake, you can easily add it back in with white, but black takes away. So with black, we just start painting. And as you can see, it's starting to go away. Now to resize, you just use the brackets on your keyboard. It's really handy to get into smaller spaces. And the, the great thing about this is it doesn't have to be perfect because you're going to zoom out here and all of that detail is not really going to show on your final size. So we just kind of want to remove where, where her head is. Okay. Where her hair is. And again, it doesn't have to be exactly perfect because all of that detail isn't going to show up. Okay. So as you can see, this isn't perfect, but if we move out, 
we can really see the effect of that. Now, one thing I notice is I might want to add that bar back in the A because that kind of takes away too much. So I'm going to go back here. I'm going to leave that bar so that it looks like it goes behind her head. Yeah, I'm going to leave that because that kind of took way too much away from our A there. And go back to our brush and delete this back out. Okay, that's much better. So we want to see that bar of the A if we can. And take this out. We don't want to sacrifice too much of our logo for the sake of bringing her in front. We still want to be able to see our logo even if it's covering it up. Okay, so that's kind of a real quick way to do that. Now the fun thing is you can see the before and after so you can disable it and that's what it looks like with the letters in front or you can enable it and that's what the letters look like when they're behind. You can see how much more visually interesting this technique is. It's much better when you do it this way. This is done a lot on magazine covers and it's just one of those effects that really makes your photograph stand out because now she's coming in front of us. It creates that depth and the logo's behind. We still see the logo, but she's what's important because she's what's drawing us into the magazine. All right, so this is step one of magazine cover design, getting our photo in place and dropping in that logo. In the next part, we're going to talk about adding text and headlines and all of that text all over our cover. So that'll be coming up in the next episode. I thank you for watching. Please leave comments below if you have questions. I will do my best to answer those. You can always send in your ideas to ideas at NikkiHeart.com. Those will be featured in an upcoming episode. You can also send in any questions or comments to that address as well. Please subscribe to stay up to date with the latest Design Like a Pro episodes. Like for example, when the next part of this tutorial is released. And I thank you for watching. Thank you.